Hello friends and welcome back to the final part of the King Tiger. What it's only taken uh, like 14 months anyways, we know all the story. Anyways, what we're going to do is uh, conclude this build. A bit of a shorter video, not really that much to do, but again I'm going to explain in depth how to achieve things, how to go for this interesting look. The first thing we're going to do is uh, let's get this model stuck together. Um, for the final part of weathering, I like to have the model totally constructed. That way I don't need to worry about anything when I need to actually fix the parts of the model. Also, I want everything to have the same overall appearance. So uh, pretty simple, obviously, we're just taking the basically the Pioneer tools. They need to all be removed from the sprues that they were on. In some places, I found that after all this painting, there was actually some of the fixing points were actually a little bit too small. So I got out the micro drill, opened up the holes again, and I used a mixture of just normal polystyrene cement, extra thin cement, and of course, super glue to attach all the parts back onto the model. So now at last, we've got the King Tiger fully together, even including that infrared kit on top, the Shine Werfer. And now we can go through and complete the weathering steps for this model. Okay, so once we've got the model assembled, and I recommend you do this, is to have an overall look and appreciation of the model. Obviously, we've got a lot of the base steps laid down in the prior videos, look back on them. Now, we're going to formulate a plan here of action for what we're going to achieve next. So, I want to concentrate on certain areas. And it's a good idea just to reevaluate what you've done so far, areas that you need a little bit more detail and depth. And that's what we do here. So we're going to use oil washers again, and we're just going to use one color again. This is going to be the contrast depth look that was going to draw a lot of detail on this model. It's going to provide a higher level of contrast. It's going to be a bit more pleasing to the eye. What we're going to use is a oil paint medium as normal. Now, the color I've chosen is a very dark brown towards black. If you haven't got the exact shades, remember, just get some tubes of artist oil paint and make up a mixture. Oil paints blend together. Even more so, you can even use enamel paints with oil paints to create the right shade. Now, when we uh, mix that oil paint, and this time we're going to use enamel thinner just because you can use enamel thinner if you haven't got white spirit. We're going to mix that together and you can see it's a very concentrated, very dark, dirty wash. However, also there are clumps of the oil paint remaining in this small palette that I've left deliberately thick. And that's going to help in the application in some areas where I want to concentrate the wash and provide even more saturation of this color. Now, when we apply the wash, we're going to break this model into various areas. It's we're not actually applying it overall in a filter way. We're actually breaking the model into certain segments and we're concentrating in certain areas. So we're starting off with a turret and we're going to draw out detail. On this King Tiger, one of the facets that really sticks out for me is the thickness of that armor. So we're going to actually draw out and exaggerate really the thickness of that armor because it's quite well illustrated on this model. The actual depiction of the thick plate can actually be seen on the top of the turret. So we're actually going to draw out and filter that out. And you're going to see that that becomes an area that's very well defined as we continue the application of this wash. So let's continue with the application of this wash now. I'd already decided previously which areas I wanted to concentrate on and also areas that really I want to make the weathering 
a little bit stronger. Now, in particular, I went for the engine deck. The King Tiger, to me, there's a couple of facets to it that really uh, stick out to me. One, of course, I already mentioned the armor. The second is that really big engine, and actually we're going to come back to that a bit later on. So the sound of those Maybachs, the oil, the diesel, the petrol sound, all that, those sort of facets um, are things that I think of when I, when I see a King Tiger. So I want to concentrate on making a rather dirty engine deck, not one that's as if it's got lots of oil leaks, but just an area that can be quite well emphasized just using this oil paint so we're going to go into the depictions of oil stains dirt grime grease everything's going to be achieved using this oil paint at the same time we're going to exaggerate again the armor on the lower hull so as you see in this clip you'll see different facets of the model it's better to work on one small section at a time but also we'll go back and forth between them that maybe you can draw that out from this particular video in that again i'm going to use the same technique of applying wash be it pin wash or also splatter and then i'll let that area of oil somewhat semi-dry i'll go to another area apply washes i'll go back and i might go back into blending streaking i may have to remove with thinner all these different things can be done but mainly we apply the wash in one single area and you can see everything's quite straightforward the difference of course to what we did previously was is that we gave an overall wash with this concentrated look to give this real strong definition what we're really basically doing is drawing out panels and lines on the model now on a king tiger they are very obviously the segments of armor the way that they join on to form up the hull makes these very strong there's very th strong and thick areas where the wash can go into so we're going to use that to our advantage it's going to draw out these shapes very much so on this particular model but also i want to give the impression that the vehicles like i said industrial i wanted to give it that industrial feel so we're going to avoid mud we're going to avoid other types of weathering effects and really this is going to be sort of a grimy oily type of vehicle really i wanted to give the impression of steel in this vehicle i wanted to make the vehicle look big metallic and sort of greasy so that's why i've used this particular oil paint remember again we aren't using different oil paints we just use simply two and i find that again why complicate the process by using one single oil paint it's somewhat easier to understand it's easier to blend all these colors together rather than making a big hodgepodge of different colors using too many products. I see this mistake being made time and time again by many modelers. Hopefully this simplistic method is uh, something that I sort of strive for when I create my models. Okay, like I mentioned, I break up the model into areas. And also I'm looking at different areas. Sometimes these get missed by modelers. It's a common problem. So make sure you re-examine the model time and time again. Look for areas where the wash has not been applied. Areas that just stick out as if nobody's paid attention to, basically. That'll help you, especially when it comes to competitions. But in this case, of course, this is being built for pleasure. But... When we turn the vehicle upside down, we can see an area where you can really concentrate the wash in. So the area on the back plate is one area that I've gone for even heavier, very thick and deliberate concentration of that oily sort of gunk. I want the theme from what I did underneath the running gear to sort of carry through there. And also the front glasses, even though it's an area that's not really that visible when you look at the model straight on, it still is part of the model. I encourage you to keep re-examining the model, look for areas it may have missed, and try and apply your weathering continuously all over the model. So 
So as we move forward again using this contrast technique, let's have a look at the road wheels and tracks, do a little bit of a variation here. Now I try and limit the depiction of this greasy oil effect on the road wheels. I've seen it on some models where guys will put this like burst oil type effect onto every single road wheel. Well, if that was the case, the tank simply would not run. It would be just totally a maintenance nightmare. So I limit this effect. I, I really just try and limit the, the depiction of oil or something on these um on the road wheel components but on a different area to look at as the track so this time instead of this uh, rusty or very shiny um guide horns let's go for oil grease depiction there or at least some sort of moist dirt type effect so we can use the oil oil paint and it will appear in some cases when it's applied thickly it will actually have a feeling of a gloss around it because when it's applied thick oil paints do dry glossy so we use that to our advantage and we'll build up another effect actually in this area here in the tracks Another thing you may have noticed with this weathering technique is the lack of pigments. And that's quite deliberate because I said I wanted this industrial type appearance. However, I do use the pigments on the engine deck. And the reason that I do that here is to build up a thicker texture. So the way that it's done is just very, very small amounts of pigment. That's the key to it. And also in very, very small areas. So instead of an overall dry brush type technique, pigments concentrated in a few areas and left there then wash is applied on top of that the dark wash again then that's dried again and also then i flick back in some pigment to build up further texture then i blend with the wash again and then you you're left with this feeling as if something's coagulated on that on engine deck i think that's the best way to describe it keep this effect minimalized or else you can end up with something that could be a little bit over the top but that's a heavy depiction of oil right there Again, I'll, I'll try and explain a facet of this weathering that's difficult to gather from looking at a video, of course, and that is the time in which this wash is applied. It's considerably less time than the previous video, but I think this was about a four or five hour session. And one thing that needs to be understood is that it's not entirely linear. So although I'll work on one section of the model, i.e. the turret, top and then the sides and then the rear of the turret i will also go back to these areas as well because after a while the oils will dry out a little bit also i've been fading throughout in some areas i've even used a thinner and a brush to remove an effect that's a little bit too heavy so once the oils are sort of drying i can see how the effect is i constantly re-examine the model now the area that i particularly return to in this example is that engine deck i wanted in particular to create this very thick oily type effect on there i wanted that to be an area of interest so quite deliberately i'll apply oil i'll fade it and i'll leave that area i'll go to another section of the model and start working my effects there once the oils have dried, I can come back to it and look again and re-examine. This is something that it makes the process a little bit more homogeneous in the way that it looks as well. The mistake that you can make is that you apply too many oils at one time. If you do that, you're probably going to wipe out all the effects that you've done beforehand. So this next segment, this is the final wash application. We're mixing up some buff oil paint now again in solution. So wash application once again. And um, we only need a very small quantity in this particular example. I wanted the effects, as explained previously, to be dominated by this greasy type look to it. But by using some buff as well, we can also fade some of those heavy areas that were on top of the engine deck because obviously 
if you have an area that has actual oil in it, I'm talking about real life here, dust will stick into it. So we sort of fade back in some of those areas that had the very, very dark concentration of oil, of dark oil paints. And it just, again, sort of helps to lessen some of the saturation, also creates a bit of variation in those oil stains themselves. The other area that we go in for as well is the lower hull at the rear of the back plate as well just those little areas and the final area that i hit as well are the actual spare track links as well they are just a little bit too stark at the moment and also let's just add in just like the feeling that some dust is just somehow within some areas of those spare track links just a very very light wash application and when we're finished with this We'll just empty the content within to the airbrush itself and we'll do an overall spray just very lightly on top of the model and also obviously we'll try and create a effect of dust at the very very lower portion of the front glasses and the rear plate. This application is so ultra thin you can barely see it but I was debating whether to go for you know again a sort of cloudy dust effect but really why don't we just make models sometimes look a little bit different? That was the actual aim of this to create this very sort of greasy look to the tank. So um, by minimalizing the dust, we basically know which effect and which sort of look is dominating the appearance of the model. But finally, the oils are completed and we can go to the very final step now. Okay, so finally, for our metallic effects, let's go simple once again. We're going to get the big 8B graphite stick out again. This 8B lead is obviously, it's very soft being 8B, but also it really does have that tint of metallic color to it. And it is very, very subtle as well, which is the effect we want to give. Remember, if you use metallic effects, in particular on tanks, the effect can sometimes be very, very stark. So in terms of that, we tend to avoid using bright silver paints or anything that sticks out too much. By using this graphite pencil, the application itself is super simple, but also the effect as well is very, very pleasing and just seems to tune in well with the weathering. The application is subtle as well. We're not going to go for every single edge. Remember when we did our first step when we dry brushed with the Humbrol enamels and we just hit certain areas by lightly touching with the graphite stick in just certain areas. You're just going to create that metallic glint on certain portions. If you hit every single corner, every single protrusion, the effect's going to be a bit overdone. So I think you may be starting to learn now, but basically I call myself more, a more a sort of a guy that goes on the lesser style effects. I don't like to push things beyond too much realism. And I know it's scale models and we will investigate in future, but in this particular example, I don't want the effect to be over powerful. I want you to sometimes detect that glint of, steely metal in some cases not and that is really how vehicles can look in some cases you're going to get areas where there's crew access or metal rubs upon metal where you get this bare shiny sort of appearance of worn steel that's been polished by touching other surfaces so let's minimize that effect and again it creates this sort of big industrial giant Finally, we can finish this model. I've really enjoyed it. Let's just have a look at the finish now, and I'll just give you a few words and opinions. Finally, here it is, 
remember when this started a long, long time ago. Well, anyways, look back at the early videos. Remember that very strong contrasting camouflage that we had. What do you think now? Do you think it's blended down? Does it look a little bit more pleasing to your eye? Does it look more realistic? Or again, does it look like totally unrealistic and maybe the effects are just ridiculous? You guys be the judge. See what you think. Um, I will always try and answer, in particular, any questions you have, I will always answer. If you have critique, I will also try and come back and try and give you my viewpoint. Remember, we're all different and we all got our different opinions on models and the way it should be finished. However, I've enjoyed this model and I really enjoyed building up this variation effects. Remember, weathering can be different on different models. In this time, I've probably mentioned it about 100 times now, industrial type look to the vehicle, greasy, grimy, big steel. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Anyways, I enjoyed it. Now, let's leave you with some sounds of a real King Tiger. And guys, I'll get you a channel update and see you again soon next week. Take care and enjoy. Enjoy.